Alright. Good morning, everyone. Alright. Okay. Daniel chapter one. Today we'll be talking about the life of Daniel. Um it was a couple weeks ago that I preached over at a over at the Whittier. And um I, I preach this uh, this sermon. Thought it would be a great uh, message for for us to um, think. I preached this a few years back, also um, reviewing reviewing it again as it's, it's such a great um, opportunity. Even though you know there are passages that we would read time and time again where there are. Such like uh, Psalm 23, we've read it multiple times, we've, we've recited it multiple times, but every time you, every time we study the Word of God, we learn new things. We continue to learn from His Word. Now we will be talking about uh, the life of Daniel, how to enjoy success without um, compromise. The, Bi the Bible is filled with accounts of many godly men and women who are worthy of our emulation. Um, there's plenty of examples in the Bible to which we can we can pick from to to follow. Uh, li uh, like um, a guideline to our life, a guideline to how we live according to God's will. One such person is Daniel, a man who obtained preeminence and power in his lifetime. We can see in chapter 1, verse 3 to 6, that he started uh, out preeminent among the children of Israel. Let's read that. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain that he should bring certain of the children of Israel out of the king's seed and of the princess, children in whom was, was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding in science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine with which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Verse 6. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Nazariah. So uh, to be, uh, right, up, right up the bat, the, you know, the king were looking for people who are who are of good standing, who are uh, above I guess we can say above everybody, everybody else IQ level, you know, one that's, that's favor, uh, favorable to the eyes, favorable to, to the mind. Someone who, who is, who is, has better understanding of what is going on around them, what is going on with the world, what is going on with, with, with the stars or what, whatever it is that, that, that they are teaching at that time. He also gained preeminence among the wise men of Babylon. In verses 17 to 20 of Daniel chapter 1, as these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom, and Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had uh, said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. And all matter and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were all that were in all his realm. We see here in this verses that he was favored to he was ten times better. Him along with with Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They were ten times ten times better than the astrologers, the the the, uh, the magicians, the, the scientists, whatever whatever it is they have in the realm. They were ten times better. We can see that he was already up 
in um, in the ranks of who's the smartest, mm -hmm. who has the most knowledge, who knows the most. Now we can see that because of that, he was given power over all Babylon in chapter 2, verses 48 to 49. Let's read that. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. We can see here that because of this, because of his standing, because of his, of his uh, success, he was put of uh, one uh, uh, the king had made him a great man. He was put over uh, in charge over the wise men of Babylon. He was uh, um, he became a ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Now that that went through even to the the Persian Empire in chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 Let's see that they pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom <clears throat> and over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first that the princes might give accounts unto them and the king should have no damage then this Daniel was preferred, preferred above the presidents and princess because an excellent spirit was with was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Now, you see here that he has plenty of success. He had he is he is in charge of a lot of people, uh, the whole realm of Babylon. The whole uh you know he is right next to the king. And the only thing, the only one person that's higher than him is the king. These successes comes because of his, of his, uh, uh, of his knowledge, because of his, of the wisdom that he got. Mm -hmm. But how was Daniel able to reach positions of power and influence without compromising his, comp uh, his position as a godly man? A close look at the book of Daniel reveals his secret and shows how we too can be successful without selling out, selling our souls. First, we notice that even as a young person, a young teenager, Daniel was a man of purpose. Let's go back to chapter 1 and verse 8 of, of Daniel. You see right, right off the bat of that verse, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile, him, defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with, that, with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Daniel purposed in his heart. A young boy in a strange land, Daniel was immediately faced with a challenge to, to violate God's law by eating the king's, uh, the king's food. Despite his youth and the uh, obvious uh, pressure to con conform, Daniel purposed in his heart to uphold the law of God no matter the cost. Now, why, is, why was this a law of blood? We recall the fire uh, They were not to eat uh, meat because uh, there, some, there are considered dirty mm -hmm. meats they are considered dirty to, to their eyes so they're not supposed to eat something that is dirty so he purposed in his heart not to defile not to defile himself and continued what what God's with what's the phrase I'm he continued to follow what God's law is because of his willingness to put God first, God granted Daniel favor in the sight of others. Verse 9. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. He is 
favorite about uh, Amal, favored by everyone else. Everybody liked him. Nobody was like, you know, oh, this guy is, you know, full of himself. He's just because he knows all of this because he looks like that. No, they favored him. They liked him. Mm -hmm. How did, how God did this is not explained, but it happened in the case of Joseph also. You can see the same thing happened to, to Joseph. In Genesis chapter 39, let's open the Bible a bit. Let's read uh, the account of Joseph. Chapter 39, verses 1 to 4. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hand of the Ish Ishmaelites, <coughs> excuse me, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, may serve him, and he made him overseer over his house, all that he had he put into his hand. So we see another account to which uh, another man is favored because of their standing before God, because of how they, they put God first. In verses 21 to 23 uh, of Genesis chapter 39, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor at the sight of the keeper of the pr prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. Whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to any to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And even when he was in in prison, they trusted they trusted Joseph. They saw the life that is. Uh, that's being led by God. I mean, they probably don't know why they're like not that, or why they don't probably at the beginning they didn't understand why he is like that, or why they look like him, why they live like that. That even in the time where they were in prison, they are like, okay, I can trust this guy. Who do you tr you go to a prison? Do you trust? Would you trust anyone? Like this. This uh, warden just pretty much gave, he was a keeper of the prison while being a prisoner. We can see here that God had given, the, given Daniel and Joseph favor, to which people around him favored them also. Daniel purposed in his, in his heart that he would not defile himself, that he would stand by what God uh, is, is, has told him. By putting God first, God blessed Joseph in such a way that favorably impressed others. The same way with Daniel. By putting God first, people saw they live a life to which they are entrusted, that, to, that they are favored, that they that they are uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But they, they live a life that they don't have to worry about people saying, oh, you know he should, he's an okay guy, he, he, he's alright I, mean, I don't trust him they were able to live a life in God's favor that impressed everyone else around them. Every child of God needs to be a person of purpose. No one respects a person that is wishy-washy, wishy you know, whatever, whatever happens, happens, or you will deal with it as, as it goes. Someone with no direction in their lives, whereas a strong sense of purpose often bred, uh, breeds respect and admiration in others. We see, we sometimes look at people that are like, you know, doing good for themselves, themselves, uh, doing great for themselves, doing the things that they want to do, doing the things that they love to do. We look up to those people because they have uh, 
they know what they want to do, they have the direction, they know the direction of their life that they want to go to. What should be the purpose of the Christians? In Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus makes it clear. <coughs> what is that verse again? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What should be the purpose of the Christian? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. To seek the will of God and fulfill it in our lives, no matter the circumstances. As Jesus promised, this will guarantee God's favor towards us, and in turn likely gain us favor in the eyes of those around us. <clears throat> you see, that the life that Daniel and Joseph lived, they, they purposed in their heart to serve God, to put God first, to make sure that God is ahead of themselves, that God will be there, uh, that they're going to follow what God wants them to do, that they are going to do what God wants them to do. God's promise follows. They are favored law everywhere. They were, they were put as rulers of, of, of kingdoms. Will you dare to be a Daniel and be a person with a purpose like he'd had? <coughs> Excuse me. No matter how young one may be, it is never too early to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Throughout his life, Daniel not only had a strong sense of purpose, but Daniel was a man of principle also. He refused to compromise his convictions as a young man by refusing to eat the king's meat or drink and his wine. He, he didn't want to compromise what he was in his life. <coughs> he didn't want to compromise uh, with the world. I mean, the, the king is offering them free food, free drinks. But, he, uh, but he, he did not compromise. In verse... Sorry. <clears throat> in verse 8, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He reviews. He didn't want to you know, waver his conviction. He didn't want to just go with the flow. He didn't want to just you know, go with what's, what is convenient. That's very convenient to have free food, free drinks, but three years. Nowadays, if we, uh, if we were to have that, man, that's a good life. <laughs> free food and free drinks, right? But he stayed with his conviction. He refused to compromise his conviction. Also, as an old man, he refused the, the gifts of Belshazzar. Daniel chapter 5, verse 13 to 17. Verses 13 to 17. Then, then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou the Daniel, that Daniel which art of the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jury? <clears throat> I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee. And that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. See, the king sees that there is a God that, that is working in him. There, there, the God is with, with Daniel. <clears throat> you see in that verse. And now the wise men and astrologers, the astrologers have been brought in before me, that they should read his writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. But they could not show the interpretation of the thing. <clears throat> and I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretation, interpretations, and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing, and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, and have a chain of gold about thy neck, and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. 
And Daniel answered and said before the king, Let thy gifts be to thyself, and give thy rewards to another. And I will read the writing unto the king, and make known unto him the interpretation. Again, another another instance in his life to which he is being offered gifts, gold chains, scarlet uh, uh, scarlet clothes. <clears throat> he did not compromise. These are uh, parts of his life to which he is at the top. At his, he is in success. How many of us would would just we are in success? These are the fruits of our our labor. These are the these are the perks of what we do in our success. How? Uh, what would be our response to it? But also under the threat of persecution, by refusing to obey the decree of Darius in chapter six and verse ten. Now when Daniel knew the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in, in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God and as he did a fourth time. This is, where, uh, this is the part of his life to which there was a decree where uh, nobody can serve, nobody can pray to any other God but Darius. Nobody can, can worship any other God than, than, other than Darius. First thing he did as soon as he know, because he is he is still a part of the, he's still a part, uh, he's still up uh, in his um, still a ruler at this at uh, this time. So the first thing he did, he knew that it was being signed. That it, it is signed. He goes to his house, opens up his window, opens up his window, and pray. He refused to compromise his convictions. People admire people of principle. Outwardly they may ridicule them, but inwardly they wish they had the same internal fortitude. But when they need someone that can be trusted and depended upon to carry through with an assignment or task, who do you think they will turn to? Will they turn to the guy that's like kind of just whatever? Or the one that's like, all right, I can do this. I'll do this. Someone who you can depend on, that you know that they will that it will be done. People admire people of principle. Mm -hmm. God also admires individuals who will stand by their principles and by their words. In Psalm chapter 15, verses 1 to 5. Psalm chapter 15, verses 1 to 5. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle, who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a wild person is contemned. But honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own heart hurts. And change it not. He that put it not out his money to, to usury, nor take it reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? The question was, who will be in, in your house, Lord? God, God admires individuals who will stand by their principles and by their words. Our society is in great need of people with principle. Those who dare to be a Daniel and uh, demonstrate by example the value of being led by the principle rather than by Christ are not only highly valued but God, uh, by God but also by their fellow men. Now, it is not always about you know, how much it takes to get the job the job done. 
it, those people with principle, people with principle, are the ones that are admired by 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 God and by by fellow, but by our fellow, but by our friends, by those who watches us. But having purpose and principle is not all. Another element for true success is needed. What that element is can be seen when we observe that Daniel was a man of purity. His opponents could not find any faults. He was faultless when it came to management of his business affair. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6, verse 24. And it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom in 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. <clears throat> Nor are these three presents of whom Daniel was first, that the, the, the princes might, be, might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the precedents in princes, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasions occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault. For as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. He was a man of purity. These guys, these other princes, these other, uh, you know, people that are under Daniel is trying to get him out of, out of his office, out of his, uh, of his, um, of his uh, stature as, as the highest of the princes. He was favored amongst everyone. In chapter, uh, chapter 1 we see that he was ten times better than those among the realm. They were trying to find fault in him. They were trying to get him get him out. Any reason to just you know kick him out of that uh, position. This would help to explain his rise to a position of great responsibility and power. Of course, his purity in business affairs was related to his overall purpose to serve God first. You know, he purposed in his heart to put God first. You know, his success is because God had favored him. That, you know, God said, Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Blessings of God. God favored him. And the fact that as a man of principle, he could be trusted. He was, he put God first, so he was favored by all men. By, by God, he was favored by God, he was favored by everyone who was around him. He, along with that, he was trusted by everyone, including the king. The king put him first above everyone else. At this point, he's already seen three kings. Yeah, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, and in chapter six, Darius. Three kings, three different kings, as in, had entrusted him to be, to be above every princess, to be the governor, to be, to be, to lead the realm. Yes, Daniel was a man of purpose. And uh, principle and purity, and how the world needs more like him. But the element that likely tied all these together in such a way to receive blessings from God in favor from men is the fact that God, uh, that, that Daniel, was a man of prayer. In chapter six, verse ten, we see the glimpse of his prayer life. A decree was signed. No one could, no one can worship any other god than me, than Darius. First thing he does, goes to his house, opened the window, kneeled upon his knees three times a day, and prayed and gave thanks before his god as he did a fourth time. So this wasn't just this wasn't the first time that he kneeled and prayed three times a day to God. This is his daily habit. This is his daily, uh, this is, a, he, he, do, he did this every day in his life. 
put God first. He prayed three times daily, a demonstration of his continual dependence upon God. He gave thanks in the midst of persecution, a demonstration of his gratitude and the fact that he had not lost sight of God's blessings. Some, a lot of times, we only remember God when we are in times of troubles. We only remember of God when we are not at our mountain peak. When we get to the mountain peak, we we tend to be like, oh, you know, all the blessings are flowing, everything is going right. Then we forget about God. We start, you know, we start to miss, uh, you know, our devotions, our daily talk with God. But even in the midst of persecution, he demonstrated that he will put God first, that he had not lost sight of God's blessing. His prayer were accustomed since early days, demonstrating his persistence and faithfulness in the service to God. It's not likely that his customs, his custom to pray so diligent, diligently helped him to remain a man of purpose, to remain a man of principle, to be to remain a man of purity. Despite his rise to power and preeminence over the empire. His prayer has made him stronger and closer to God. Christians would do well to follow Daniel's example. Let us learn the lesson that the finest of God's servant must, servants must maintain regular and fixed prayer habits in order to continue steadfast in devotion to the Lord. <clears throat> As Christians, we too are to pray often. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 17 to 18, I believe most of us know this, and most of us have memorized these verse, verses. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Pray without ceasing. You never think of things, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 2. <clears throat> Continue in prayer and watching the same with thanksgiving. We, as Christians, we are to pray often, pray without ceasing in everything, everything. Give thanks. But this is the will of God. What does everything mean? Not just the things that are good. Not not just the things. Not not just the blessings. But also for those for the for the trials that we come that we face. For for the for for the, the trying times that we have to to lean more to God. For the success that we have received. In our efforts to live purposeful, principled, and pure lives are not what they should be. Could an undisciplined prayer life be the reason if we are not person of purpose, we are not principled in our lives, if we are we don't live a pure life? Our prayer life may be the reason for that. Are we willing to dare to be a Daniel? Daniel in regards to prayers. Everything before that, you know. We just uh, in Daniel chapter one verse eight, with Daniel purpose in his heart that he put that he would put God first. There is a false assumption that to get ahead in this world. One must conform to the to sinful practice, practice of the world. That we need to sell our souls. That we need to to give up or, or what to give up uh, God. That in order for us to to get ahead uh, in this world, we need to 
uh, we need to sacrifice our service to God. But even today, there are many Christians who demonstrate that when one dares to be a Daniel, they can succeed in the affairs of men without selling their souls in, uh, to the world. How about us? How about you? How about me? Will we dare to be a Daniel? A man of purpose? A man of a principle? A man of purity? A man of prayer? The world really needs more people like that. The world needs to see more Daniel. Do we dare to be a dad? Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank the Lord for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, for the life of Daniel. A man of purpose, a man of principle, a man of purity, and a man of prayer. Pray, Lord, that we have learned much, learned much about his life, about your word, Lord. Pray that we would that we would grow closer to you, Lord, through our prayers. Pray that we would apply things that we have learned here today in our daily lives. We give to you, Lord, our daily walk. We pray that you continue to walk with us, continue to guide us, continue to work in our lives. We give to you, Lord, the rest of the day. We pray, Lord, you continue to guide us and protect us. We give to you everything and all the praise and all the glory. In Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen.